I'm Jana and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. This week, I'm very excited to be the host for the new Funky Junkie Challenge. Our new challenge is going to be grunge, ghouls, or giggles. Are your makes going to be delightfully frightful, spooky and cute, or will you be adding a touch of grunge? Well, we want to know. So head on over to the Funky Junkie blog to enter the new challenge. This challenge is open from October 20th through November 2nd. Today, I'm going to be creating a spooky and a grungy vignette, and I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques for a couple of the more standout elements. Go ahead and pause to see exactly what materials I'm going to be using. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner for some spooky, delightful fun. Today, we're going to be working with some of the new Tim Holtz ideology and I'm going to be making a Halloween themed vignette box. Now, the centerpiece of this vignette box is going to be this fantastic cauldron. The detail on this is really cool. And we're gonna make a bubbling potion, but I've gotta do more than just make a potion. We're gonna light it up. So we're gonna be adding some of the Tim Holtz tiny Halloween lights to this. And we're going to be using some of the purple lights. Now, how to get the lights into the cauldron? Well, that shouldn't be too hard. We're going to do a little bit of heavy duty crafting. I'm going to be drilling a hole in the bottom of the cauldron in order to put the lights in. Now, before I do that, I'm going to put something down on the mat so that I don't accidentally drill into it and I've got a leftover piece from a previous vignette box. So we're just going to take the cauldron, turn it upside down, take the drill. I'm using about a quarter of an inch bit and we're going to drill a hole. So I'm gonna grip the sides of the cauldron tightly, line up the drill, and we're going to gently squeeze. See if I can't get a good angle. Okay. Let's try working from here. Okay, didn't take too much pressure. Let's go back down. As we can see, the bit has indeed gone through. So now I'm just going to quickly reverse this and we'll see about adding some potion to this cauldron. There, nice and easy. And there is our hole. Now let's make our cauldron bubble. For this, I'm going to be using some of the new Tim Holtz Ideology Bubbles. These are absolutely fantastic, and they're going to be great for creating at Halloween and Christmas, all throughout the year, really. One tip I'd like to share is that I found this really cool Tim Holtz Ideology tin, and it's just the right space to store your stash of bubbles. Okay, let's color some of our bubbles. To do that, I have got two little plastic shot glass containers and we're going to add a bit of alcohol ink to color these. For coloring these today, I'm going to be using some Purple Twilight. And for coloring these, you really only need a couple of drops. And then once your alcohol ink is in the container, just put your two halves of the cup together, hold on and shake. And there we go. Now we've got some lovely purple bubbles. So I'm just going to leave them in this cup. I'll set them aside and that'll take all of a minute to dry. Okay, let's turn our attention back to our cauldron. So we've got our bubbles colored. Some of them I decided to leave clear and the others I have colored with some of the purple twilight alcohol ink. Now, We've got our lights, and we're going to feed these through the bottom of the cauldron. We've got that hole all nicely drilled, and I'm just going to thread that through. Now 
Now, in order to get all these lights to fit down there, we're going to start coiling the wire. I have left some of the wire out of the cauldron and that's going to be later used to light up the vignette box. But for now, let's coil these lights. To do that, I'm just going to grab a distress crayon and I'm going to start wrapping the lights. And that will form a nice little compact coil for me to feed into the cauldron. So we're just gonna create a little bit of a bundle and we'll drop that right into the cauldron. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's take that little bundle. We're gonna drop that in here. Perfect. All right, let's see how that looks. I'm going to just light up this one section and see how intense that is. Ooh, that is gonna be fantastic. Okay, so we can see that we've got quite a bit of light in there. That's great because I want this potion to look like it's exploding out of the cauldron. Now let's go ahead and start adding some of our bubbles. So for the bubbles, let's corral some of these over here. I have a mixture of purple ones and clear ones. And I want to mix those throughout the cauldron. Okay, so I'm going to start by placing one of the larger bubbles at the bottom so that I have a base to build off of. Now, to adhere these into the cauldron, I decided to go with some glossy accents. This is going to dry clear and shiny, so it's not going to impact the way that our bubbles look. And I'm going to very carefully add that to the bubbles before sticking them into the cauldron. So I'm going to try not to get too much of the glossy accents on the wire, but I do need to have a sticking point so I can build off of it. Okay. And we'll just keep adding in the bubbles until we have a nice mound of potion going. Okay, I'm just going to continue stacking in bubbles, so let's go ahead and put this part on fast forward. Okay, and there is our bubbling cauldron. Let's see how this looks when it's lit up. Ooh, that looks great. So I'm gonna leave that to dry and then we'll come back to that. Now that our bubbles are dry, let's go ahead and add some texture to the cauldron. I'm going to be adding some translucent grit paste next. And I'm just going to dab that on the edges of the cauldron to get some texture going. Kind of want to make it look like we might have some potion spilling out over the edges. That is looking good. I like how we're getting kind of a bit of a foam look. And after this is dry, I'll then color that with some purple alcohol ink. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside to dry for now, and we'll keep working on other parts. Okay, texture paste is getting dry, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of alcohol ink to this. Okay, that looks good. So we'll just let this dry off. Now, let's make some potion bottles. So. For potion bottles, we're going to be using these little glass ideology bottles, and we're gonna to have to put some stuff in them. So for one, I decided to 
add some of this really neat moss. And we'll fill up one of the jars with that. Let's see. Let's put that in this one. So I'm just going to shred this and then poke it into the bottle. That looks good. And we'll add one more piece. Okay, so that little bottle is filled. I'll just stick the cork on that and call that one done. Nice and easy. For our other one, I'd like to add some little bits of bone. So here I'm going to grab some jewelry cutters and cut apart these bones. All right, and we'll just stick these pieces right in the jar. There, now we've got a couple of bone fragments in there and I think I'll add another shard. Okay, so that looks all right. We'll set this one aside. Now, for the other jars, I wanted to add some more liquidy looking potions. And to do that, we're going to be using a bit of resin. So I'm going to be using a pretty standard two part resin. So you add the same amount of each bottle in order to get your mixture. And I'll just put my measurements here on this little cup mark that off and I've got a little mixing cup over to the side so I'll just carefully pour in up to the line okay, and then pour it into the other mixing cup scraping out the inside now for the resin we're going to be coloring it using more alcohol inks and that's going to give us a really cool potion look and i think i might even add a little bit of distress glitter into one of the potions okay now well, we'll just cap up the first bottle and we'll add resin from the second bottle Okay, good. Now we'll just mix the two parts together. So now that I have both parts of the mixture in the mixing cup, I'm going to mix it together for about two minutes. This will give the resin enough time to incorporate, and then we can start adding some colors and playing about with the potions. So I'm gonna put this part on fast forward. Now that the resin is thoroughly mixed, it's time to divide it into the four little bottles. But before I start pouring it into the bottles, I'm going to give it a quick blast with my embossing heat tool. The heat is going to get rid of any of the extra little 
bubbles that might be trapped in the resin. As you can see, there's definitely a few and we don't really want those in there when the resin cures. So again, let's put this on fast forward and I'll show you how I'm mixing up these little potions and adding a bit of sparkle. Okay, let's take a look, closer look at those potion bottles and add a couple of details. So these are the first two that we did. This one has the dried moss in it and this one has some bone fragments. We've got this one done with resin. And these two are also resin. This one has some of the Distress Nightfall glitter in it. And then this one also has alcohol ink in it and a bit of Distress Rock Candy. And the last little potion bottle we have is down here. That looks really cool. And I tried to get a little bit of a drippy effect going on the side and some Distress Glitter in there again. All right, so for these, I have found these really cool little labels. These are from Ideology and we're going to stick these to the bottles. I'm going to start off with the one that says Toxic. That one's probably my favorite sticker on here. Take that and I want to put that one on this green one. Okay, cool. All right, I might need to come back in later with a bit of collage medium to make sure that's good and stuck down. But right now, I'm just gonna leave that. Let's see here. Hmm. This one is also good. Let's put that on this one. I don't think I'm going to put stickers on all of the bottles, but definitely on three of them. Okay, and the last sticker that we'll use... Ooh! The Shake Well. That one is good. All right. Good. And we'll just set these aside for now. Next, we're going to be altering a paper doll for our other focal point in this project. To do this, I'm going to be using some Distress Crayon and I decided I'd go with some prize ribbon. So to do this, I'm going to just scribble down a little bit of the Distress Crayon on the edge of the media mat. And we're going to then water brush on the color. So I'm using the fine tip detailer brush and we'll use that to apply the Distress Crayon. So just pick up a little bit of color and we'll start adding. I am loving these new paper dolls. They are full of detail and have lots of fun, spooky vibes. So we're just going to add on the blue on the dress. All right, that looks good. Next, I think I'm going to grab some Tattered Rose. Okay, so we'll just put a little bit of the Tattered Rose down right here. Pick that up with the water brush and add it. Okay. 
Hmm. I'm thinking I also might want to add a little bit of dried marigold as well. The tattered rose is just a little bit lighter than what I was going for, but it's a good start. Okay, so let's put down a little bit of the dried marigold as well. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with this. It's going to let that dry a little bit and then we will continue to add. So the other two parts that I want to add to this paper doll are a little mouse for her to drop into the cauldron and some wings. Now these wings are awesome. We're not gonna do butterfly wings. We're not doing fairy wings. We're going to be using bat wings. These are just unbelievably awesome. And these are from the new Tim Holtz Ideology Halloween transparencies. Okay, so I've already got a little bit of foam stuck on the back here. So let's just remove that and we'll add the wings. Perfect. And I'll just use a little drop of collage medium to add the little mouse. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside to dry and let's go ahead and start assembling our pieces. <laughs> 